everybody and welcome to another episode of Triassic Theories. Oh god, this tea's starting to get cold. In today's video, we are going to be talking about something that has not been talked about whatsoever from anybody. And that is about one dinosaur, Cynoceratops. If you recall in that movie, we technically see two variants. Now, originally, I, I, like many people, thought that the two variants were just because of lighting. Like, that was the reason why um, the one we see face a Carnotaurus looked different than the one we seen earlier in the film, giving kiss, warm kisses to Owen. But, with um, the release of Camp Cretaceous, as well as um, their, the Mattel toy that um, was released. We um, see a blue version of that, which is based off the Camp Cretaceous one. And I know what you're thinking. What does that have to do with anything? Well, if you recall, the original Cenoceratops that we seen was green. And both of them have the exact same pattern for like the orange and white eye spots and stuff. But I'm talking about the base color. Colors. Pattern. So, you may be thinking, what does this have to do with anything? Why is this? Because my theory suggests that this is the movie's way of explaining the sexual dimorphism of the Cynoceratops. Now, this is a little tricky. We can't tell, we can't confirm which one's the male or female, but we can, we can basically say that it is confirmation that this is the sexual dimorphism for three ways. The first and most obvious one is the color pattern. We see one version that is a green, a green toned, and another that is a bluish toned. Like, take the um, Mattel toys, even though the green version of it for Fallen Kingdom was actually a packy dinosaur. But you can clearly see the difference in color pattern. Now, that I'm not going to go too deep in the color scheme because it's been, it's quite obvious in that one. However, there are two others. The second one that is, which is another obvious one that not many people seem to be looking for, is the Cynoceratops' horn. Now, if you recall, in the short film that was released last year, Battle at Big Rock, and if you haven't, it's on YouTube, link to it in the description below. I highly recommend you go and watch it. It's a it's an awesome short film. And um anyway, we see if we see a group, a family of Nasudoceratops. And you can see the sexual dimorphism between the male and female. I'll probably put in some images here showing the um male and female together. You can see that the nose the rich nose um, armor, armor on both of them is quite different, with the males having a more rigid and, and bony look to them compared to the female's more smooth, bumpy look. Not bumpy the ankylosaurus, like bumpy like as in bumps. And also in the horns of the, of the Nasudoceratops. Particularly, the males have much more th much thicker horns, and the females ha have, well, thinner. And the males, I think, are supposed to also be longer, but I can't confirm that. I know the males are have thicker ones and are a bit larger. Now, what does that have to do with the Cynoceratops? Well, if we look at both the green version of the Cynoceratops that we see twice in Fallen Kingdom and compare it with the, um, Cynoceratops that we see, um, the blue one that we see face the Carnotaurus, as well as um, the ones in Camp Cretaceous. I'll probably put some sh shots. As well. Hold on, I need I need a drink. I'd offer you guys some, but so the Cynoceratops has horns, different sizes. Um, for the thickness. I'm pretty sure they're about the same thickness. However, the males seem to be 
the blue one seems to be quite longer than the um, horn on the green cynoceratops. Now, with res with um, this could be called into question. This one may be a little iffy because of the fact that the first cynoceratops we see, the horn is actually a little damaged, which could be due to previous fights or something, or just old age. I mean, I don't think it has a nail filer to sharpen and polish that horn, because, but if it does, I need to know where they got it from. I mean, it's on his new bar, but it's probably toast now. But anyway, anyway, we can tell that blue one has longer horns than the feet. And the third and final one is behavioral traits. Now, if we compare one scene from the Cenoceratops in both um, Fallen Kingdom and Camp Cretaceous, let's show the behavior. In Fallen Kingdom, the, the green one, which in this video I'm going to label it as the female version, because many people are going to assume that's what it is now because of this. Um, the female probably, you see um, the first time around Owen, it acts on um, kind and caring, nurturing like a mother. It gives him nice warm kisses, which is like what a mother would. Now, for the blue Cynoceratops, we can see that um, this version is quite more is more aggressive due to the fact that when Carnotaurus tries to attack it, it immediately goes on full on attack mode. But you can see that um, the Cynoceratops, instead of trying to um, go away once it like um, does the first, um, once it um, gets it, the Carnotaurus on the ground once, it goes for, it continues to attack it. Eventually after its final flipping of it, it does run away, but during the first like attack on it, it could have easily started running away, but no, it continued to fight, which is most, I don't mean to be sexist to the animals, but in like most people's view, that is mostly seen in males of animals. Now, obviously this is false. Females can be just as aggressive. But if we're taking it from the normal human perspective, the, um, the males of the Cenoceratops family are, must be more aggressive. So, my theory suggests that the blue versions of the Cynoceratops are supposed to be male. Now, the reason why I also think this as well in the behavioral thing is because in Camp Cretaceous, we also see two vers both versions of the Cynoceratops again. Every time we see the green variant, they're being calm and quiet and stuff. And then every time we see a blue variant in Camp Cretaceous, especially during episode three, it's aggressive and attacks. Now, in one scene, it's because it's being blocked from meeting up with its herd, which is understandable. However, in a scene in episode three of Camp Cretaceous, just to be clear, which is on Netflix, of course, um, two characters, Brooklyn and Darius, um, find a lone Cynoceratops in a little bit of a jungly area. And they both, in my opinion, stupidly get out. But immediately after getting out, you hear a roar, and then they come back in, and immediately that Cynoceratops rams its horn straight into the um, gyrosphere. Which, I gotta say, even though that can stop a 50 caliber bullet, that glass is pathetic. It, it doesn't deal with fingernails very well either. Just, just wanted to point that out to the sphere. Makers have to fix that, just in my opinion. But you can see that it's quite aggressive to them. Even though we don't see what they are doing because it's off screen, we, from what we can tell, they immediately get out and then like after like two seconds, you just hear a roar and then you hear them scream, running back and stuff. So it assumes that, I assume that like it possibly turns, sees them and immediately goes um, after, which is not what we see with um, the green variant. 
when the first time it was with a human, which was Owen, it started caring and nurturing him and telling him to wake the hell up, there's lava be. But anyway, guys, that's just a theory. A Rexy theory. But anyway, guys, what do you guys think? Do you think that this is a possible one? Personally, of the three theory videos that I've made so far, I would say that this is second. The only one that beats it is the Indominus Rex's ability to communicate with Carnotaurus, specifically Toro. Go and watch that video. And you can also get the both of them in a playlist that should be in the link in the description. If not, just go to my channel and my playlist and it'll be Triassic Theories. But anyway, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like. And leave in the comments down below whether you agree or disagree. If you agree, then that's pretty good. You can say why you agree or something. But if you do disagree, why is it? And what theory do you suggest that explains this? Do you think it's just a genetic anomaly? Or do you think it is um, the way of showing sexual dimorphism of the sinoceratops? But until next time, be safe, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.